Uh, Take it away, you're up. Oh. <clears throat> Hello, we're, so, are we recording? Yeah. Okay, we're, I'm, I'm Michael. I'm Kendra. James. And our presentation is on Radio Shack. I thought you guys were going to do it in like harmony. Radio, radio, radio Shack. <laughs> First Radio Shack. Ooh. Where was that at? In Texas. In Texas? She knows she can make it up and I won't know right now. <laughs> I can Google it. <laughs> I, I, I don't remember where the first Radio Shack is. That's cool. I, I knew that was the first Radio Shack. The company was started as Radio Shack in 1921 by two brothers, Theodore and Milton Dutchman? Dutchman. 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 Who wanted to provide equipment for the radio. After expanding nine uh, store businesses, the company went bankrupt and then uh, Charles Tandy bought the company for $300,000. Tandy, sorry, Tandy Computers. You guys are probably too young for that. Too young. Tandy computers. Those Wait, were those were good computers back in the day. <laughs> Way before me. Is that? Uh, oh, we're going to Tandy one thousand. <laughs> After the acquisition in nineteen sixty two, Radio Shack chain went nearly bankrupt again. It sold fourteen million dollars worth of AM, AM and FM radios, ham radio gear, walkie talkies, speakers, and antennas annually, but was spending more money than it was taking in. So. After that, they had to sh shut down the stores in the UK, Australia. What was the other? There was another country that they shut down. It's kind of like Domino's, you know, going into sandwiches and chicken strips. I don't think they've perfected the pizza yet. Maybe they should work on that. And then they can move into other things. That was kind of the history of Radio Shack. Like, I don't know if you should move to the UK yet. We'll get into that. Later. Okay, all right, sorry. We'll get into that. You're, you're skipping ahead. <laughs> We'll get into that. This is more history on um, Radio Ooh, Shacks about video. how they're selling expensive cell phones. There's like three or four, maybe five commercials. Probably you skip ahead to the first one. Um, like 30 seconds. Did you plug this thing in? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The affordable, transportable I can't believe you guys found my radio. my video for me as a kid. Like a really <laughs> <laughs> yes, that old brick style phone is fully transportable. These old relics were a far cry from the features you'll find on today's smartphones. Take a look at this General Electric cell phone commercial from 1989. The affordable, transportable cellular phone is here. Quality made by General Electric. This cellular phone features 832 channel capacity, 30 number memory speed dialing, last number redial, electronic lock while not in use, adjustable volume control, and Siri. <laughs> that was a 1988 phone. Take it from car to car. Optional battery available for true portable use. Not exactly the cutting edge features we would expect today, huh? Now, I'm not sure about the exact date of this next commercial, but it looks like the early 1990s for this Motorola flip phone and cellular one. It seems hard to believe now, but cell phone makers were not only selling phones, but the lifestyle which goes with them. There's an incredible freedom that comes with using a cellular yeah, phone. I got all my guys working on it right now. And once you've experienced it, <laughs> there's no turning back. Now, through this special TV offer, you can receive a Motorola flip phone with cellular one service for just pennies a day. Now, everyone... Beginning of the Razor B. Personal cellular phone. You can make a call anywhere or get a call anytime. 
Stuck in traffic? Call and change that meeting before you're late. Yeah, Jack, let's change the meeting. Talking talking change the plans. Change your plans. Can you call me if you need No me. problem with the flip phone. Oh, think of the places you'll go and the things you'll see. We're going to show you every possible lifestyle situation where you can use that fancy new phone. This next spot comes to us courtesy of British Telecom in the 1980s. It's not a cell phone commercial, but rather a pager commercial. Ah, remember the pager? It's James! video for Motorola. I want you to try and count the electronic relics in this video. Those who think getting a car phone is not for them, whatever the reason, haven't kept up with the booming industry of cellular radio telephones. Seems like this are becoming commonplace in U.S. cities where cellular is available today. This revolution in communications could make it possible more and more people to have a phone in their car, or even one that travels with you. Like this unique cellular portable made by Motorola, which weighs only 30 ounces. Right now, businessmen and women are major users of radio telephones where cellular is in service. But more people will take advantage of cellular as its benefits become apparent. Eventually, seeing people using cellular phones may seem as commonplace as someone checking time on an electronic watch, figuring on an electronic calculator, or programming on an electronic computer. Love that. It weighs just 30 ounces. Hey, thanks for watching. Join me again right here. Not, not too many of those around anymore. Dun, 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 dun. Have you guys ever used one? Look, whoa, whoa. Five years ago. Five years. Was Kevin Pye even alive for any of that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I actually, I remember when in 1995, I bought a Motorola phone just like that. That wasn't cellular, but it was for my house because they had the cell phone version and they had oh, a yeah. house version. Yeah. And I thought I was the bomb diggity because I had this cool one that looked like a cell phone that I could use in my house. It's cordless then, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even breaking the cord at home was a big deal. I've never seen a radio shack in one time too. Not Shaq. Shaq. Some more history. This is an article, more probably like a coupon on a page or something, where they're um, newspaper ads. Yeah, zero interest for their overpriced items. Want to talk about the structure? Um. This is a, the structure that Radio Shack um, started as because um, they they were always trying to venture their way into different structures, which kind of messed up their their whole mechanism of um, being organized. Where can I ask a quick question? What's the related charts thing? Oh, that's something that I tried. I'm to just cut kidding. Off. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 I couldn't help myself. I'm sorry, Kendra. <laughs> like, um, up here is like marketing, development, um, advertisements, and this is like technology where they got creative, and so on and so forth. This is what they called the new shack. They thought because they needed a new name, maybe like something more catchier. They thought maybe if they rephrased it, 
Like yeah, minus something shack. new. Just the shack, <laughs> aka like it was supposed to make them better. But companies like, um, for example, what was it? There's this one that they they basically um, they started like they started a nickname too, and then they ended up going bankrupt too. So basically. Even though like they created a new name, a new look for themselves, they still weren't able to not save themselves and not go bankrupt. That was after uh, Tangi got sold out and they named a new radio show. Uh, is this the Weird Al commercial? This is um, a commercial from 2014, uh, the, sh the Shack, but it went back to Radio Shack because that's what everybody knew this was, it as. This was the Super Bowl commercial for 2014. You gotta hit play on that, James. Okay. What? The 80s called. They want their store back. <laughs> <laughs> I never saw this commercial, it was good. It's time for a new Radio Shack. Come see what's possible when we do things together. You can tweet? I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so I remembered. It was, it, was all, it was actually called Circuit City, but they used the nickname as The City, and that was supposed to be their AKA, and that, they ended up going bankrupt too. That worked out well for them. <laughs> okay, explaining the gen genesis for the change. By keeping up with the technology and the change, by instead of entering into different um, business strategies, they should have just stayed to the one that they started with. And instead of um, trying to stay as Radio Shock, they should have um, went towards more of um, Best Buy because didn't they have a um, chance to go more towards Best Buy? Yeah, yes, I'll, I'll get into that in a minute. Did you want to? Yeah, I'll, I'll finish. It's a long time I've seen Mr. Tuck be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, well, explain the factors that affected the decisions being made. Okay, now, and then, and then, and then. The 1970s and the 1980s, Best Buy, I mean, excuse me, excuse me, Radio Shack was known uh, for, for um, selling, it was the world leader in selling uh, C, CB radios and antennas. That was the, 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 that was a craze back then, okay? Batteries and batteries, well, and batteries, and so yeah, batteries as well. So, um, one of the changes was, you know, in the, in the late night, well, the early 19, no, the late 1980s, the CB radio was, um, the, everybody didn't, they, they were, they were um, transitioning from the CB radio to the computers, to computers, anyway, okay? Um, nobody was, the, the, the trend of the CB radio was, was dying out, well, it was dead. Um, Pouring up Hicks in Alabama, find CDs to, you know, so, okay. <laughs> you know what, okay, okay, and then, and then, <laughs> <laughs> in the late the late eighties and the early nineties, um, the major computer companies emerged. Um, you had the uh, IBMs and the Dells and the and, and Apple. You know, mm. all the new latest technology that they couldn't that they didn't want to stay up with. Mm -hmm. Basically, so I mean the the computer um, they they wanted to get in the computer game, but. Uh, the computer space, but the uh, the company, the major computer companies were emerging. So I mean, they were building better computers. Um, and then then in the, the um, late in uh, 1980s, the late 80s, they um, with the emergence of the, the computer companies, they they start selling selling their their, their assets, uh, selling their computer businesses because they were taking a, a major loss. They sell uh, they. Uh, they um, sold their circuit board business, which I don't know why they did that, but okay. And they sold their cell phone manufacturing business. Now, at this point in time, 
Radio Shack was the go-to store for all appliances, all, all, all the electronical, uh, the electronics, excuse me. Um, they, had, they also had leather too. Oh yes, and leather. Electronic and leather. Full of leather. Jackets, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. yeah. yeah because uh, in, in the 1970s and 1980s, that's when uh, can, uh, Candy had uh, bought the leather business as well. They brought in an organization and just made it the radio. You go buy electronics, but it would smell really good. Uh -huh. So it was like clothing stuff? No, well, it was it was like accessories. Like, okay, yeah, it was accessories, accessories like refurnished goods, like yeah. um, okay. stuff that was sold as refurnished, rebuilt, and um, not really modernized, but just basically rebuilt, retouched up. They sold that batteries. And okay, after they sold all their their their, their primary assets, um, they started. Well, they started up. Four new com four companies, um, and and in, in, in the computer industry, the uh, they, they started a computer store. They started a um, a battery store that, where you can buy batteries. They um, they started a refurbished uh, electronics store, and uh, then they had um, what they call an incredible universe, which was a Best Buy knockoff. That that's it was what awesome. They, that well, can't believe they went out of business. Oh, yeah. Just emphasizing those three points yeah. again. <laughs> really important. Again. And again. Okay. And again. We get it. The death of the CB radio. It, it, it did something. The CB radio was dead. <laughs> so, this was a CB radio. Uh, yes, yeah, so the, the Breaker Breaker 1 9 radio for truckers that truckers use today. Smokey yeah. and the Bandit. Yeah, Smokey and the Bandit. All, all that, all that stuff right there. That's that's what um, sir, sir, uh, Radio Shack's moneymaker for for um, two decades. Two decades. Yeah, but it, but we don't use the we don't use anything. You never had a CB? No, I'm saying. Like, when, no, 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 no. Like when, when I, they were in style, do you know what like it was it just a leisure? No, I mean, just, I mean, yeah, just, uh, I guess it was a, a bunch trend. of rednecks. Yeah, out <laughs> hey, their trucks. that's it. Drinking beer. Drinking and, uh, beer, um, saying, where's Smokey? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like the popo's yeah. coming. That's it's what something. they do. And, and Everybody pull over. You know? <laughs> Jim Dean is over there. Yeah. <laughs> Roger that. You're going to have to run us some interference. We got five minutes before the moonshine comes through. <laughs> And these were the computers that um, Best Buy sold. This is the Best G Buy. I mean, excuse me. Oh, okay. I was like, Best Buy never um, sold that computer. Radio Shack sold. <coughs> Remember, this is the monitor, the keyboard, and the CPU. No, no, no. Uh, uh, okay, well, well, you know, the, uh, the, the computer. Yeah, I'm not go. a computer guy. I'm just, uh, um, it's on the line. This was uh, th this was top of the line at the, at the time. Okay, I'll so, give you ten extra bonus points if you tell me what the software is running on the screen right there. I was just curious. I was just trying to give you a shot. This is a TRS-80. <laughs> okay, but I okay. wanted the software on the screen. <laughs> this is a TRS-80. So, I'm impressed that Apple you know that. Uh, it's not Apple. It's okay. VisiCalc. Anyway, oh, sorry. It's the first thing the before drive. Excel. What? Is the hard drive in the monitor? There's no hard drive in that. It's all disk drives right there. Oh. They're floppies. It was the okay. floppy oh, yeah. ones. You know. Yeah, right, right here. It's yeah, that, right there's there. A yeah. and B disk That's drive there. It's like yeah, this is this is what I, uh, this is. Anyway, I'm just whatever. trying to throw out some extra credit points here. Okay. I was just trying. Uh, all right, and then <laughs> okay, this is what the Computer City, uh, that one of the companies that that they that one of their um their con their the concepts that, that they wanted to uh, get back in the game with. Subsidiaries? The subsidiary companies. Um, this was uh, Computer City. Like I said, they sold computer computers. Um, this is uh, Energy Express Plus. They sold batteries, computer batteries, you know, double A, triple A batteries, you know, batteries, you know, of all sorts, okay? This was, okay, this is their uh, famous brand electronics, where pretty much they sold refurbished electronics. So you get you get a computer from Apple, 
uh, an older computer from Apple, and they'll refurbish it and sell it to you right there. Um, same thing with, 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 with uh, LG and Blackberry. At the time, Blackberry was, uh, everybody had a Blackberry. I know I had a Blackberry Pearl, so I mean, everybody had a Blackberry. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> You're not old enough. And then this is an incredible, uh, incredible u universe. It's the uh, Best Buy knockoff. It was, like, it was like Best Buy, Super Best Buy is what I would call it. You know, like a Super Walmart. <laughs> well, 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 I mean, they're fries now, but well, well, they yes, were Incredible but, Universe. They were way cooler than fries. Fries is like junky, but Incredible Universe was just like nice. But they, they, they went out of business. All these companies opened in 19, uh, 1993. And by 1998, all these companies were closed. Yeah. All of them. So, <laughs> was a change good, a good thing or a bad thing? Obviously, they went bankrupt, so it's bad. Obviously. How many times did I go bankrupt? Nine times? Yeah. Like, counting like you know, the definition of insanity is doing something over and over again, expecting the, dif yep. the same or the different, different results. results. So, I believe that would drive anybody insane. Go bankrupt that well, many times. Bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> and the last, the, well, um, in the years before, um, Radio Shack went bankrupt. Their quarterly uh, reportings were they, they were losing one hundred and nineteen point three million dollars a, uh, a quarter. Like guacamole. That's a lot of money. Over four, they they had at one point in time they had over four thousand stores in the U.S. and, and well, the U.S. or well, internationally. Now it's only like 1,200. Wall, no. Wall Street took them off uh, Wall Street because every quarter they were below $50,000 uh, oh. and stopped. But in 2005, in 2005, Radio Shack, um, they, they partnered with Sam's Club to have kiosks in, uh, Sam, in Sam's Club. Now, Radio Shack was making a comeback. They, they, they were generating, you know, revenue. But Sam's Club and Walmart, well, no, well that's the same thing. Well, Sam's Club and Walmart, same thing. They, they was like, no, 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 you're getting too big. You, you know, you're not gonna sell this here at my, at my store and, and not cut me in on some profit. So they, uh, the, their contract with Sam's Club was uh, terminated. So uh, that, that put a hold to everything. Sure, it uh, wasn't because the Hicks and Sam's Club wanted to sell CBs. No, well, well that, that too. <laughs> and then, you know, I mean, the kiosks didn't have their, the, the right CBs. So they couldn't go break a breaker one break nine. Breaker? That would have been the break. highest selling cell phone. <laughs> they called the breaker breaker. The break, breaker <laughs> one nine. Um, so in hindsight, um, in hindsight, um, <laughs> I'm going to get that joke. <laughs> <laughs> the change was a horrible thing. It was horrible because I don't, you, you know, you can't go in business. You can't go from, you know, okay, you're the top, you're, you're the you're top of the top, and, and you're, you're you're the king of the castle, and, and the cream of the crop, the, the cream of the crop, rise to the top, rise to the top. Okay, I thought you were going to rap that song to us. Hold on, <laughs> but anyway, you can't go from you know being the king of the castle <clears throat> to um, you know making horrible business decisions because uh, in their in their uh, organizational structure they have Radio Shack had had at one point in time maybe maybe 37 vice pre, uh, vice presidents over you know marketing and and, and you know all over a everything so they, they were trying to put their hands in everything they were a jack of a jack of all trades but a master of none and, and, and with the um, the emergence of emergence of techno technology, um, they couldn't keep up with it um, because they didn't know better. So, so they went bankrupt. They they, they tried to venture off and, and to do too many things. What should the organization have done? Like I said, stick to one thing and go with it. You gotta master. You gotta master your, your business before you you know you, you, you expand to something else to another area. Yes, Mister. Which thing do you think they should have done? 
they should have they should have worried they, they should have um, <coughs> just stayed with may, maybe computer and computer accessories. Okay. Why? Because at the time computers were were they, they were trending up. Even though you had competition, but you know you you sold. A, what could a, they have done differently than like? <clears throat> I think Best Buy's beat everybody out at this point. Mm -hmm. But we used to have all sorts of different computer companies around. Circuit City was one of them. I can't remember there was one. Prize? No, Prize is still here, but Prize is more like a superstore. It's say. everything. Um, yeah, they have groceries. Yeah, <laughs> Prize sometimes. But my question is, <clears throat> like, what do you think the computers could have provided to keep them alive? Well, I think computer because they had they had okay, they had the um, the computer the, the computer store. If they would have joined all their all their efforts into one store, that's Best Buy because they had computers, they had you know um, electronic um, accessories. accessories. They had they had batteries. Yeah, yeah. They had you know even uh, refurbished and, and they had circuit board business. And there, so I mean, they could have they they could have centralized all of that in one store, and and, and that would have that, that would have um that would have been their their uh, niche because no other store would had 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 what they had. Well, they would have had Best Buy. Well, well, I mean, Best Buy came a, little, a lot later. Okay, but, Circuit but, City. But that that would have been Best Buy. Yeah, that would have been bigger than Best Buy. You think Radio Shack could have pulled off a Best Buy type of store? Yes. Thing? Yes, yeah. that's what I'm saying. They, 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 so they, to me, and I'm not trying to be combative, but the thing with Radio Shack is it's a fascinating case. They were around for so long, and yet they never seemed to do it right. Like yeah, any yeah, of it. Yeah. Like they were just Radio continuously Shack. horrible. <laughs> and I'm like, how has this company been in business for this long? It's got to be a front for the mob. You know, <laughs> like, it, like where did they even come up with money? Because I remember the last big purchase I made at Radio Shack was an RC car. And I would go there for like little components, like, LEDs and stuff like that, and switches to when I'm installing car stereos, like you could go buy switches at Radio Shack. And I think that that business got killed with the internet. Because yep. you could get online and order stuff, you didn't even have to go there and see if they had the right part and all this kind of stuff. But um, I think that I bought an RC car at Radio Shack for like 200 bucks, I went and bought their best one. And the next day my best friend's like, we're gonna do RC cars, it's awesome. So he went to a hobby store, I actually did RC cars, and he brought this truck and he came back to his truck was so much better than the one I got at Radio Shack. <laughs> and it was like 10 bucks cheaper. And I remember going, what? And he's like, yeah, Radio Shack is like junk for everything. And yeah, they just cool. never had the top end of anything. Uh -huh. They were always just kind of like where you'd go to kind of uh -huh. Optimus, I think was their, you know, their brand of stereo. And you're oh, like, who wow. wants an Optimus wow. stereo? You know, it's like, come on, <laughs> get, get a Kenwood in there at the time. Or, you know, get a Sony oh, wow. or a Yamaha or something like that. <clears throat> so, but I think it was their, <clears throat> excuse me, I think it was their, um, their electronics business that was trying to make money by selling through their stores. So it was almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy of death because their electronics suck. So nobody would buy them yeah. and the stores are failing and it's interesting. So, but then they could have had a, um, if they did, um, joined everything, they could have had a, you know, an internet market. And they could have they, they did a lot of things to, to prolong their debt. Well, so I give you Radio Shack and I tell you if you can produce 20 billion in 20 years of profit, 20 years, I'll give you $10 billion. Okay. Okay? You start it tomorrow. What do you do differently than what they've done? What I do, I, I would go to the, I would, I would have contracts with the, 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 the major, the, the major um, manufacturers of goods. I would, I wouldn't, I would not, I wouldn't, no, actually I would, I would, I would do the kiosks, but it would be better equipment. It would be, you know, brand name equipment instead of brand, brand name items. Instead kiosk of, where? A kiosk, I mean, it, I'll have, it, I'll start it in a mall, uh, like a mall, okay? And then, you know, um, <clears throat> do that for, you know. And what, what are you selling in the mall kiosk? I'm just curious. Um. Because if you're in a mall, you you know you're selling iPhones, yeah. but yeah. there's already the Apple stores yeah. right there, and you got yeah. five Verizon stores and but two I mean, AT&T I mean, But you have to strategically but... place your kiosks. Well, what's your kiosk going to give them that they won't get somewhere else? Well, I mean, uh, it depends on you know what mall you're in, what mall you're in. You know, it's not it's not you know oh 
well, well, what stores in the mall? And I, I don't want to go to a like a low end. Uh, well, uh, you probably I probably have to start <laughs> in a low end mall, and then and then work my way up. But you know, it's not. It's, it's I, I don't. You know, or I, I'll have a store. One store. Whoa, whoa, we went from a kiosk to a store. Or, yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm yeah, yeah, that's right. You're yeah. spitballing. I like it. Uh, I want to hear your you know, ideas. Or I'll open one store. And not next to like a, 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 like a, a Walmart or something or a Target. Next to a Starbucks. Next to a, grocery store. And next to a Starbucks. I mean, partner with Starbucks. And because everybody goes to Starbucks because they need to fix. Plus, they have money because Starbucks is a little expensive. Anyway, so, you know, and, and, and run advertisement, uh, advertisements, like uh, run deals, specials, and stuff like that. On, on of you what? Know, uh, you know, That's what I'm trying to say. What I, would you I, I sell would bring, at Radio Shack? I, I would bring in high-end TVs. See, that, that, that's always... Uh, a uh, TV uh, market's low margin, though. Well, it is. Um, I would buy, bring in... You can't do cell phones. I mean, because... I mean, cell phone repair? I mean... <laughs> that's actually a really good idea. You know, so... I think that would have been a brilliant strategy for Radio Shack to start doing... Become the place to get your phone repaired. Like, if you crack the screen... Yeah. And come on in... They they've got parts connections. Uh, come in and get a Radio Shack backed lifetime warranty glass case or something like that for your new iPhone. That yeah, that might have actually been a really good. Warranty is where like they like they offer it with it even with like with a cell phone plan like hey you buy your iPhone six or seven here and then we'll offer you two years of services where if you break your iPhone you only have to pay. $29. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a brilliant mm -hmm. transformational strategy that could have kept Radio Shack in business. What do you think, James? What would you do? You'd sell iguanas? No. Like, I've gone in many places in the mall where they charge close to $200 for a new cell phone plate. For right. I think, I think that's probably, I've never heard anybody say that about Radio Shack. That would probably be the greatest thing that they could have done. And I'm, I'm not joking. Like, they had stores everywhere. Yeah. And so they could have said, come to your your friendly radio, your, you know, your local radio shack, and we'll take care of your cell phone for you. They're already stocking tons of parts well, in the back. Why don't they just make I them profitable on parts? I the online website they had it where they'd have, like, um, a do-it-yourself thing where mm -hmm. they actually had, like, a thing where you, like, you could um, go into a radio shack and ask them how to fix stuff. Or they'll show you how to fix it. Or like Have you guys anything. heard of iFixit? You know what iFixit is? So iFixit is a website where you can go on and they're about repairing anything. And so they teach you how to do it. Kind of what you're just saying. Yeah, but guess what? Next to everything so. is uh, you want the part, click here and you can order it. And so they sell all the parts. They sell the tools. They sell the parts. And they allow anybody. Their, their whole model is open repair. Like they don't hold anything back. They tell you exactly how to do it. They say... We designed this tool to make it easier. That actually could have been Radio Shack. Yeah. That's not a bad thing because Radio Shack was all about the fixers mm -hmm. and the people that wanted to repair stuff. They missed that boat. That probably could have been a huge market for them and maybe even do classes, how to start your own cell phone repair shop using Radio Shack parts. Like that's actually a really good idea. I got a little fuzzies on that one. I don't know why they didn't do that. <laughs> but um, with but that- But a ching, no. But, <laughs> but with that, if you was the owner of Radio Shack, how would you brought your business back into existence? Uh, well, the most stores out there that are right now because of the economy. Well, they went bankrupt. They went. They went from ten thousand stores worldwide down to. I think it's twelve hundred to seventeen hundred yeah, stores. Yeah, I think it's twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. Well, what's the more convenient place to work right now? Hmm. Uh, I, I, no, I, I really didn't hear you. He um, says there's more convenient places right now, and I totally oh, agree. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I think, do you think Radio Shack got kind of gangster? Uh, I mean, who goes well, to Radio Shack? I mean, yeah. It wasn't the store you're going to go to for anything, in my opinion, unless you're going to get like a little five dollar switch to put in your cars there. Yeah, I think I think Mission, uh, Mission Valley Mall down in San Diego. I think they have a Radio Shack in there. That's the I think that's the worst mall in in, in Southern California. That's a bold statement. <laughs> I think it's a little small. It's a little ghetto. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> but, no. Um, Have you been to La Mesa? 
Have you been to Santa Cruz? I've been to Santa Cruz, yeah. Well, well, that. that. There's like shootings there like a couple weeks ago. I think that's more Canada. Uh, well, <laughs> that, that, that's debatable. As I walk through the valley. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do um, you have any questions for us? At the moment, no. Sean. Sean, what would you do if you were Radio Shack do a transformational change instead of going bankrupt? Well, it seems like they were uh, surviving off the CB radios. That was like the big thing. I think they just needed to find another like uh, like another product, like a main product. I mean, it seemed like they weren't able to. I think they did had a good idea. I think they were indecisive since they went into so many different areas. I think they just said one of these are going to catch, mm -hmm. and that's going to hold us up. And it didn't. I don't think the idea was bad. I understand the logic in it, but it didn't work out. What about changing to the cell shack? Well, well, and, and that's the like thing. Radio, because, well, radio, well, well, no, because I don't think you know they, they tried to do a name change to the you know they changed it to the Shack because they you know they they named it Radio Shack because they, they were selling CB radio radio, radio, radio equipment and stuff. Well, so they went through three different name changes. Yes, but then but now they went back to Radio Shack. Um, what if Shaq bought him and didn't make, made him keep No, 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 no. <laughs> Shaq, Shaq, Shaq. <laughs> it didn't work. With Popeye Period. Chicken. Uh, <laughs> partner with Popeye Chicken. You buy, you, you, that's, you buy, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Popeye's you, chicken. chicken. You buy a phone here, you're going to get a two-piece. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let's bumble this. Cajun style. <laughs> But no, uh. Um, Wear an LSU no. hat, you get free fries. Just be a greasy radio. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. Overall, um, when it comes down to it, I think there's many lessons that could be learned from from what Radio Shack tried. Like like them with their change. Like it seems like the the paths that they're trying to do, they weren't really um, they weren't really trying to change much. Like they still wanted to offer the same um, Batteries and old mm -hmm. products that weren't really. Cell phone batteries. I mean, they could be killing it. Yeah. Cell phone repair. <laughs> okay, and then, like, them trying to change their name so many times, like, it's not going to save your business. You're still the same. You're still right. the same. Right. We'll see, but, but then, but then, excuse me, but then, if they change their name, you know, Radio Shack was already uh, established right. brand name. Right. You know, everybody was like, you know what? No, no, they still that, that's Radio Shack. I'm, I'm still not going there. I'm still not going there. Well, yeah, but if on. they if they became the go to, like, imagine them. Be, the other thing was, you go to Radio Shack, people are kind of tools. You know, like, oh, you don't know about that. Yeah. You know, like it was like, oh, can't believe I have to tell this peasant about anything. It's like, really? Come on, I'm asking for a complicated part, and you're acting like you know what it is, and you don't. Yeah. yeah. But maybe if they had. You know, foreseen the whole concept of phones becoming so big and just become the experts at it. I, I, I really think nobody's ever told me that. That's a brilliant idea. That would have been a great way to transform. Yeah, like, it. I can see if they were to come up with a new business plan where they started cell phone repairs and then they changed it to the Shack repairs. You keep it the Radio Shack, yeah, but radio trust, shack. trust the Radio Shack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Because know. because you're trending up now. Because it's like well, yeah. to bring more like attention because mm -hmm. people are going to still think like, okay, that's. That's still Radio Shack. They still probably just sell. But they um, could have done an overpriced. ad campaign instead of the Shack. They could have had the new ra you know, Radio Shack is brand new. What we do is take care of your phones. Well, sure. I mean, just think like about going anything. into Radio Shack, it just seems like yeah. all their stuff was overpriced and it wasn't really good, any good goods there. So. No, I'm just talking about the name. Like, okay, and you guys then, are okay. Um, you got seven minutes. So I'll shut you down. Seven minutes left. Another thing that could be learned is. I mean, tell they're at 45. Venue and following through, through towards it. Like Michael said, trying to uh, like learn your business and go all these different follow paths like that they try to follow. It just like made it a mess where they went bankrupt. So it wasn't that great. And that's it. Any questions? Thank you for your time.